Hey all, this is going to be the procedure video for lab 4 where we linearize data with logarithms. We're going to use pendulums um, for our data. We're going to measure the period of a pendulum and we know that the period will equal um, 2 pi times um, L over G in parentheses to some power. So we're going to use logarithms and we're going to take measurements of period um, for some given length of a pendulum. So the first thing we're going to have to do is make a pendulum. Um, and that's pretty much what I have here. I have a string and on the end of the string I have um, just a nut, like a hardware, you screw it onto the end of a bolt. You could just as well use a roll of tape, a small one, I mean, you could use a big one as well. It's going to depend on how you hang it. And that's real, the real part of the setting up of the apparatus is you need to find somewhere to hang your pendulum so that when it um, oscillates, when it swings, um, the rope that's moving or the string that's moving is not brushing up against anything and as it goes back and forth you, there's no bumping of the bottom, the weight. It's called a plumb bob on a pendulum. The string in the plumb bob. So you don't want the plumb bob to hit anything because that'll change its motion. So here's a pendulum, um, but we need to hang it. So if you don't have anything, if you don't have a coat rack, which would work well, you could use a doorknob or a door handle. Um, you could use a command hook against the wall. You just got to be sure that the string isn't making any contact with the wall. So, if you don't have anything else, or if you just want to make a pendulum stand from nothing, um, you can use some kind of bottle, something heavy basically, as the support. Send a pencil out of it with tape, and then you can tape your string with the mass to the pencil. So, I got a Windex bottle here, I mean you could use a water bottle, you could use um, you wouldn't want to use a gallon of milk. You don't want it to get smelly while you do the procedure. Um, you could use a bottle of bleach, a bottle of vinegar. Um, the taller the better, because then you have more freedom in the lengths you can choose, but it's not necessary, as long as you can vary your lengths. Um, with this one, I could vary the length by... I just have the string taped here, so I could take some more of the string away, and then I could tape it, and I have a new length. So. Um, that's pretty much how to build your pendulum. This is a way. Uh, if you have a table or um, just any kind of edge, you can hang it from there, which I've done on this table. Let me aim you. Cool. So I did it here. Um, this is probably, if I was doing this lab, the whole of the procedure, I, I think I would use something like this. I like that. I can leave the extra overhanging string on top and I can move this tape and I can just give it more string or I can pull more away, put the tape back on, and I have my new length. Um, there's something important here though um, about where the tape is. I'm not taping up here because if I tape up here, let's use this one, I'll use my hand as the tape. Um, so my hand is the tape and it's on the top. So. Um, and the dimension I'm swinging in is this way. Of course it's not this way, because we hit the wall. So um, if I hold the, if I, if I tape it up here and I let it go a little farther away from the other pendulum, um, if I hold it up here, notice the string is rubbing up against the table, um, and we absolutely do not want that. So, in this case, the pendulum, its length starts here, right at this corner, um, but it's being damped by the table, and we don't want that. We want to just see the oscillations of a pendulum. So, if instead the tape is right here, as it is here, um, the pendulum starts right at the end, right at the bottom of this edge, and there's nothing for it to run into. So. That's making your pendulum. You know how to make it. Let me get down. 
into frame. Um, that's making your pendulum. Um, when you use your pendulum, I'll just stay down here and work with this one. Um, when we take data, we're going to find the period um, with a timer, like your phone, stopwatch, something like that. Um, we're going to find the period for some given length. So we're going to change the length. But something we won't change is the angle that we pull it back to. Now, our formula for t, t for period, remember, t equals 2 pi times parentheses L over G to some power. Um, that formula is only true if this pendulum doesn't move through big angles. It needs to move through small angles. And we can define small angles by angles smaller than 15 degrees. So I have a protractor, um, and I can see if I hold it aligned. I don't, oh, backwards. Um, this is 90 straight down, 80s here, 70s here. So 75 is right in between. Or, yeah, 75 is right in between. Um, and that's going to be our 15 degree mark. So this is the most we're allowed to pull our pendulum back angle wise. Let's make sure that's Because if we don't, um, it won't obey our formula. So we need to swing with small angles, and we need to use the same angle every single time. So you can mark with tape. You can do something. Um, set up a marker so that you know you're going to the same angle every time for every trial. Um, so now let's talk about, um, let me, let's go back up <laughs> first. Um, so, there are three pieces of terminology that we need to um, define before moving on and like reading the instruction. So, um, we're going to talk about uh, the different oscillations we'll have, the different trials we'll have, and the different lengths we'll use. So, we're talking about the period of a pendulum, um, and the period of a pendulum means exactly the length of time it takes the pendulum to do one full oscillation. Now the oscillation means one full round, one full go, one full swing. So if we go, that's half an oscillation. We've only gone half of the true oscillation. And then all the way back is one oscillation. So every time our plumb bob, our mass, gets back to its original position, that's one oscillation. So let's see two oscillations. One, two. So those are the oscillations. So the period is the time it takes for one full oscillation. It's tough to time. It's tough to time exactly that. So um, when you measure the period, you'll measure the time for some number of oscillations divided by the number of oscillations, and you'll have the time for one oscillation. And it's a lot easier to see two, three, four, anything more than one. It's a lot easier to count or to time them reliably by um, getting the time over more than one oscillation. Additionally, every time you um, solve for the period for some number of oscillations to be back to the period of one oscillation, um, That'll be one trial for your given length. You're going to have to do more than one trial because we're going to have to come out with a standard deviation. Um, we need some sort of uncertainty to use throughout. And so we're going to need um, to have more than one trial for every length. And for every trial, we're going to see more than one oscillation. So say this is length one for me. And I have to do, say, two trials. Um, you'll do more. It'll be more than two. But say I have to do two trials. Um, say my number of oscillations is two as well. So I time, there's um, trial one. Time that, and I've written it down. And then I time again for trial two. 
and then that, then I have two times for this length, so I can get an average and a standard deviation. So we're going to have multiple oscillations to find the time for one oscillation. And then we're going to have multiple times for one oscillation for each length. And then we're going to have multiple lengths. Such that we can have um, data points with uncertainties. We can then fit our line somehow. Um, we'll get there when we get there. Um, we'll use logarithms to simplify the formula and then we can just plug, uh, we can just solve for a line. So, you have to make a pendulum, you have to hang your pendulum in a way that you can have multiple lengths. So, I mean, you could cut the string off and then put a whole new string if you wanted, but with this, I mean, send it farther up, tape it again, and you have a shorter pendulum. We need a pendulum that you can change the length of. That's our apparatus and it needs to be made such that the string does no rubbing um, on anything that might dampen it along with the plumb bob so they're free to move um, and that's what we need for apparatus when we take data we need to make sure that we don't go over 15 degrees with our angle otherwise our formula doesn't work and it doesn't make sense what we're solving for. So you gotta keep it under 15. And you gotta keep it consistent. Every time you're pulling it back to the same angle so that the only thing that varies um, with every length is length. And that concludes this video.